This week in physical science, we were reviewing the periodic table of elements and I stumbled upon this amazing idea. So today I'm sharing all about how you can play periodic table battleship and I'm sharing the blog where I found this idea. First, I wanna share that this idea of periodic table battleship I found on a blog and my PLC group, which is all the physical science teachers that I meet and plan with here at my school, has a website. We have a Google site where they have linked things they've used in the past and they had linked this, which is how I found it. And the blog creator is Teach Beside Me. So I'm linking her blog and this specific idea in the description of this video. And also I'm linking her Instagram if you wanna follow her for more amazing science ideas. So we were reviewing the periodic table of elements and atoms, and this is something that my students needed more practice on, but we had done a lot of different types of practice where I didn't feel like we were clearing up all of our misconceptions and things that we were messing up on as far as the periods, the groups, the families, and just familiarizing ourselves with the periodic table in general and all of those things. So this rolls all of those ideas into one. It's a really fun review game. So let me show you what the rules were for Battleship and also how I set it up. All right, so I'm the type of teacher that every year I like to be able to reuse things. So I create sets for my classroom and I always have a speech about reusable materials in my classroom and how we need to take care of them and respect them so that I can reuse them because they do take a long time to create. But once you have done that, you just pull these items each year and it makes life so much easier. So the idea that I saw, now mine might differ a little from the blog, but you can read the blog to see what she did as well. So. I used these manila file folders or colored file folders, and I had colored copies printed out of the periodic table. And the important thing is to make sure that we've got the um, periods and groups numbered out. So that way that's helping them as they're playing Battleship. What I also liked about this specific periodic table is that for students who are still struggling with the families, we had a color coded map up here so that they could correspond those. So I did want it to be printed in color as opposed to black and white for this one. Um, so I went ahead, printed the two copies for each student. We laminated it and I had a student who was ahead in one class help me with laminating these. We stapled them to the file folder. And of course there's two sets. So it's four periodic tables for a group of two students. And then up here, I just did these little binder clips. You could use a paper clip. You could staple it if you wanted, but I liked the fact that they could detach it because some of my students didn't use it like this because eventually when you're done, you can set it up on a table, you can spread it apart like that. And now they basically got a battleship board where they've got their you know maps hidden from the other student. Some of them separated it and kind of moved them further apart. So the binder clips worked for me. And then in this crate, I just had hanging file folders with a set for each one. And now next year, this will be there and I will just simply pull it out. So that's how I set up the whole thing. And then we used, while we were playing, uh, these vis-a-vis -vis and expo markers on the laminated part so they could draw out their map. And then we also gave each student, and by we, I mean I, I'm so used to co-teaching, I keep saying we. So I gave students a paper towel and a Clorox wipe, and that's what they wiped down their board with to reset and then dried it off so that they could dry on it again. And that's all the supplies, that's all the setup. So now let me go over the rules. All right, so these are the rules that I put up on my smart board and went over with my students before they began. And what I told them is the, the purpose of this review game is that we're reviewing being able to identify and locate elements on the periodic table using the period, the group, the family, and we're not allowed to say the actual elements name or its abbreviation. So 
The rule was if they said those things, their turn was automatically skipped. And you know in Battleship, we're alternating turns every time trying to locate and hit their battleships until we've sunk all of them. So I did review Battleship because I noticed that some of the students had never played. So we talked about how you can place your ships on the periodic table, the fact that we can place them diagonally, side to side, up and down, all of those good things, strategies, um, just to make sure that everybody knew how it worked. So they can't say the element's name, they can't say its abbreviation, and I also told them that they could not say the atomic number unless it was in the lanthanide down here. These two rows have the same group and period number, so for these two, the only way to identify them without the element's name or abbreviation, they could use the um, atomic mass or the atomic number on those. Now, what you could do every round that you played, you could change the rules. You could let them only identify it by atomic numbers or periods and groups or then families. Um, I've also seen on Instagram when I shared a lot of people were using it to review valence electrons, which is another great way that you could use this. So lots of different variations you can create and you could create different rules for different rounds so that we can review those things separately. One of the things that I loved about this was that while our students were playing, when things didn't start to add up and students realized that they thought they should have sunk a battleship um, or they could tell in their conversations that the other student wasn't understanding where they're guessing, they started to teach each other and correct misconceptions. Like for, some, for instance, specifically, one student was switching uh, periods and groups because they had a misconception that because the numbers were listed out in certain ways, they were flipping columns and rows. So we realized that, and that was a great way to fix that, and then also practice correcting it, and repetition always helps. Plus, they're playing a game, so they don't even realize they were reviewing it. All right, so let's show how they actually placed these battleships. Um, this bottom portion was their map where they had placed their battleships. So they were using the expo marker and up on the board, these were the battleships we were placing. So we had four, which will have to cover four elements. We have a three, we have six, we have two and two. So they were placing those on the board. And one of my rules is that every ship had to be in a different family. Now we did say they could cross over families just to make it more interesting, but you can kind of do whatever you want. So let's say they wanted to place their six ship. One, two, three, four, five, six. There it's placed. Let's say we wanted to put the two over here in another family. We could put another two up here. And now we've got what? A ship of three we're gonna put right here. And we've got a four, so let's go right here. And then let's see, two, two. All right, we've got all five ships placed. So now their map is set. And then they were gonna use up here, using our groups, our periods, and our families. And then we can also use atomic mass and number down here. And they'll call those out. And then if it's a miss, if it's a hit, they can circle it. If it's a miss, they can exit. And so that's how they're crossing off on their list where they've hit and keeping and recording it on the top map. So just like in Battleship, that is how you play and you just alternate turns back and forth. And we did this for a class period. So most students were able to complete a uh, three rounds. So they did best two out of three to see who won overall. But they got really into this and it was such an excellent way to review something that could have been boring otherwise. And it was a great formative assessment for me as a teacher because as I walked around, I was able to hear what issues they were having. And sometimes when they couldn't figure it out because they couldn't see each other's board, I would look and be able to identify the issues that student was having and then correct those as they were playing. So I absolutely love this game. I absolutely love games, period. So if I can find a way to bring them into my classroom, I'm game. 
no pun intended. And I'm linking the blog where I got it from, Teach Beside Me, and her Instagram down below. And I wanna thank her because this was such a fun way to spice up periodic table of elements. And I hope that you enjoy it as much as we did. That's all the time we have this week. Let me know if you have any questions right down there in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on TikTok and Instagram where I share more classroom lessons and ideas. And until next time, happy teaching and I'll see you in the classroom.